This is Josephine Baker. She's one of the most extraordinary women that I've painted and even talking to you about her today, I'm a little bit nervous because I know I'm gonna miss some important parts of her life. She had so many interesting chapters, but I'll try to cover just a couple of them. When Josephine was about 19 years old, she was in a dance troupe in New York and she got to visit Paris um, with that group and pretty much became an overnight sensation. Uh, they loved her, they found her exotic, they found her interesting, they loved her blackness, they loved her humor, she was always crossing her eyes and doing these silly little Charleston moves. She was very charming. And also, she was not afraid to wear very little clothing. In fact, one of the things that she became noted for most at the beginning was the skirt that she wore that was basically just a, a string around her waist with a bunch of bananas, like rubber bananas, I believe, that were, were attached to it. And she comes out of a palm tree and does a sort of jungle dance, and they loved it so much. And in fact, they gave her her own show. They had, she had a theater that she was always presented in, and everybody in Paris knew who she was. Everyone was talking about her. In fact, at one point, somebody gave her a pet cheetah. So she was seen around town walking this cheetah with this diamond collar. And speaking of diamonds, she was also one of the wealthiest women by this point, which was interesting because she was actually born into poverty, but she did well in Paris. And so she loved Paris. They loved her and, she, and eventually she became a citizen there. And when Hitler was on the rise at the beginning of World War II, she recognized a lot of the same symptoms that she had seen as a child when, um, she was actually living in St. Louis when the riots there broke out and she recognized this sort of race, this, well, racism coming up and um, she immediately signed up and found out ways to be um, on the, the resistance, the French resistance against the Nazis. And so then she became a spy. Because of her performances, she was able to sort of hear what uh, officers who came to see her shows were saying and because she at this point she was wealthy and visited with the upper crust in society um, people would come to visit her chateau and she was able to pick up what maybe the what the nazis were doing then around different places and and so and what their plans were and she would write these um what she found out with invisible ink on her body and also she, because she was well known she was able to go back and forth between countries unlike other people in fact wait let me put this down i forgot to show you here she is looking very military <laughs> in the end she was given um, a medal of honor by the president of france and so she really did give back uh, to her her new country but eventually she did visit the States again um, because she was such a big star. And um, at this point, in fact, I'll show you the other one again. It's both, it's, she's both, but this is, this is sort of how they knew her there. Um, she had a hard time when she visited the States because things were still so segregated there. And she had to really work to get audiences that were mixed. Um, by this point, she was so famous that it was only white people that were allowed to see her and she didn't like that so she would just sit on the stage waiting for uh, the producer or whoever owned the building to um, change their mind and in that way she started to, to fight the civil rights in America and because she was famous and she had a voice she spoke out quite loudly about it but it was very frustrating for her to go back to her home country and see how different it was Oh my gosh, I'm already at like four minutes. So um, please look up more about her life. She's so interesting and um, look, she eventually adopted a family of 12 children that were all multiracial. There's so much to say about her and I'm, I've got to say goodbye.